Hello, everybody. I'm Derek Tevis. This is your Farm Simulator 15, uh, third quarter 2015 uh, mod review. We're going to look at the mods that we covered this quarter, of which technically there are two here, but uh, and uh, we'll see which ones are the best. The two that we have here, the New Holland and the New Holland, those are free DLC from Giants themselves. They work just like every other Giants piece of equipment. They're air-free. They work fine. They have no special things attached to them. So, they're fine, but they're not super awesome, amazing, stellar, great. So now that we've covered that, we're going to go jump into our Peterbilt from, I don't know which quarter, and we're going to take a little ride around our map here where I've parked a whole bunch of stuff. I'm going to skip a lot of that, but we are here in the Bjornholm mining map. Ooh, I'm going to kill myself. Um, and there was a lot of, there was a lot of ooh, high jinx that happened here. Um, and some low jinx. Let's go check out the mods we got. Here we are pulling up to what I'm calling dump trucks. You, quiet. All right, here in dump trucks, we have... Well, just that. Dump trucks are transport trucks of similar nature. Now, we have a bunch from one particular area. Right at the end of the quarter, we got into these Megaris packs with the, uh, the dump truck, the skip truck, uh, this truck, which is a three-side tipper, and then this one, which is like a panel side, or not a panel side, but a canvas sided. And they all accept random things, uh, usually dumpables, grain, and the like. I will say that all of them, without question, if you load into a map like this one that has a bunch of other things in it, you need to mod the mod in order to accept the extra items. But that's not hard to do, and you should be able to find a way to do that. We also had the Ford Cargo 2520. We had a Scania dump truck. We had this big old Freightliner dumper. And then we had this Gauze, which has a Saws on the back. It also has another. It's actually a... Almost a, uh, what's the name of those things? The, the multi-back things. Swap body, that's the word I'm looking for. Uh, it's almost a swap body, but not quite a swap body because it only has basically dumpers that swap onto it. It doesn't have anything non-dumperish. All right, so what matters here is, well, what looks good, what works well, and what has no errors, just like everywhere else. Uh, with that in mind, starting with this Ford Cargo 2520, I don't like it um, because I can walk into it like that. Also, it has some serious log errors in it. Um, they're classified as a major log errors, and so I would avoid it. Um, they are, they're fixable errors, but it takes a lot of work. The same is true of the Freightliner dumper, actually. Um, you can't walk into it, thankfully, but it's actually not a Freightliner. Here's the secret. It's a man 8x8. If you actually look in the mod, that's exactly what it's called. Man 8x8. They just reskinned it. It's also full of major log errors. Ah, so we don't like it. Sad day. We don't like it. Scania Tipper. It looks great. It's a bit small, maybe, for some of these bigger maps. Oh, thank you, Ford. Um, problem. It's got major log errors. However, it's major log errors are easier to fix than these other two jokers here. They're a little bit more difficult. Both of both the Ford and the Freightliner throw a huge list of Lua errors. The Scania does not, so it's a little bit easier to fix. So, eh. We have the Gaz Saws here, which is a good, inexpensive truck, uh, as most of the Russian slash Ukrainian equipment usually is. It doesn't have anything super amazing in it, but it's a good, decent starter truck, and I like it. I think it's good. But it has some stiff competition amongst these Magrises here. And I'm going to kind of consider the Magrises all one vehicle, because in reality, they really are one vehicle with a bunch of little additions. And in all cases, the vehicles look really nice. Let's just take this dumper here for an example. So I've got my 7, 8, 9, and backslash. And look at that, I have a truck that I can see in, in the engine bay. Well, if I can line myself up right, I can look inside the truck, I can roll down windows. So it has all the extra features, all of these Megrises have that feature, that these guys just don't have. So, when it comes to dump trucks, 
get the Magruses. <laughs> just just get the Magruses. If you don't like the Magruses, I'd say the Godsaws is your next one in line. If you really need a, a more of a Western European truck, the Scania is okay, but you need to clean up the um, the log. You'll need to load it into its own game, load it in, find the logs, make all the fixes. Um, these other two just don't even bother. Don't even bother. All right, let's go to our next category. Come on, Peterbilt. Let's roll out the always interesting category of swap bodies. Yeah, these are both technically swap bodies. I didn't bring the rest of their body panels down because, well, that would take me way too much time. We've got the Boucher TR2400 swap body, and then we have this Deuce Agro Double XL. And to be honest, I don't like either one of them. The problem with swap bodies, and this is a problem across a lot of swap bodies, is that often the body swap units come into the game, clips in the ground, they don't work properly, they, when you detach them, sometimes they fall into the ground, which actually happens with the Boucher quite a bit. I just don't like them. Additionally, that, that deuce, that we talked, uh, it, it just, it has the turning radius of a small planetoid. It's terrible. I don't like it. If you like it, great. Good for you. But I don't. So there you go. I don't like the Boucher either. Um, both of them seem to be okay in terms of... Um, what they can do but they don't seem to to help your frame rate let's put it that way they do hinder your frame rate a lot more even though they have no log errors so take that with a grain of salt i don't like either one of them i'd say avoid them both sometimes the mods we had were just uh i don't even know how to how to describe quiet pete uh, I don't know even how to describe them. Uh, but let's go with nearly joke status. I think they could be interesting, but this pack of U-Hauls turned out to be an unmitigated disaster. This is a hundred something kilometer an hour U-Haul truck. Now, in reality, that's fine, but uh, let's just say the giant's physics engine can't handle that. You can haul plenty of fish in your fish vehicle. You've got a U-Haul trailer for horses and for whatever else you can put in there and then you got a couple vans here uh one this one because it has arctic on the top is a cold van and it's got a trailer that is the same yep that's the trailer it's got uh these vans are ridiculously high speed they they're very easy to get yeah, they're just no just just walk away from the u-haul go back to this truck get another trailer yeah don't even bother with the u-haul pack even under a lot of editing, I don't think they're really worth your time or effort. And here we have a slideshow. Yes, 20, eh, 15, 20 frames per second. Okay, we have the mining equipment and mining trailers, construction trailers, what have you. First, we have the mining pack, and this is a bunch of equipment that came with this map. Well, it's a separate download, but it comes for this map. That includes these two Ponzi's here. One's a dumper, one's a cistern. Includes this big uh, trailer. We've got a caterpillar here. We've got a man 8x8 cement truck. We've got a dumper. We've got a concrete flatbed, and we've got a couple of... Um, excavators as well as this concrete trailer um, also that bucket that's sitting there those all kind of those all come in that pack there's nothing per se wrong with most of them i don't like either of the two excavators they're not really all that great um but other than that there's nothing really wrong with any of them it's fine if you have the pa if you have this map there it's probably worth taking a crack at them but then we have these. These are from FH Modding, um, most of them. There's one at the very end, which you guys already see. And you're like, no, that's not with FH Modding. No, it's not. Uh, one, I want to point out this one, this Volvo with its um, little rollback device here. It doesn't act, I never got it to work. What I ended up doing was actually using front loaders to lift the, the rollback onto the back of this thing. And then it, then it attached. I don't know why I could never get the rollback to work, but I couldn't. Still, uh, okay, great. Here's my issue with all of their equipment here. 
all of the FH modding equipment, if it's tracked, it turns slower than molasses on a cold winter's day in Antarctica. It's unbelievable. In fact, they'll just stop moving. You can't, you can't really rotate them very well. And overall, I'm not completely sold. The one positive to all of them is you can turn on the ability to alter the earth, meaning that you can actually plow with them, which is interesting. I'm just, I, I can't say I'm sold on any of them. This Magris over here, it's great if you are in the line of Magris, meaning that if you are using a bunch of Magris equipment, um, it's definitely worth checking out if you're doing that. Um, and you don't need all these heavy pieces of equipment here. Over here, we've got the trailers that came with FH modding, the interesting transport mechanism I have here. So we have the trailers from FH modding, all of these ones, and it murders my frame rate when I'm over here. Unbelievable. Um, I don't know why that is. And it is. I have tracked it down to these trailers. I don't know what they've done. I can't find any errors with them per se. So I don't know what's going on. All I know is it's bad. I would just be very careful what you load and what you use for that reason alone. And then we also have these shields over here, which are construction equipment. I believe the FH modding guys are building a map that takes construction into account. And if that's true, these become useful until then. They're really not a lot useful other than decorations, really. So there you go. I would say use all of these with caution because some of them are not very good, but they're part of a pack or they're causing frame rate problems. But what exactly is causing it is unknown. So there you go. Use all of the equipment with caution, except for the Magris. The Magris is fine because it's a Magris and all the Magrises seem to be okay. Here are, well... This became the other, really, uh, or the tankers, I guess. Well, except for that guy right there, because he's not a tanker. This is the other tankers. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll go with that. Uh, we had uh, this big tanker here and its blue equivalent over there. That's from FH Modding. That will haul diesel, milk, or water, depending on which tanker you use. They're fine. They're tankers. I don't think they really add anything or do anything amazing or new. The Magris pack had a epic metric ton of equipment, including this diesel tanker here, this milk tanker with its extra tanker thing on the back, plus a big milk tanker if you want a big milk tanker. We had a slurry tanker that I, yeah, and then a slurry tanker with a slurry tanker on the back. And then we had this thing here, which is a, a little grippy thing for, you can actually use the scoop for loading the back of this. So it's sort of like a dump truck, but sort of not like a dump truck all at the same time. Interesting, right? Well, I'm I'm not really 100% sold on the trailers from FH Modding, the ones on the far left and right. They're fine, but they don't really add anything that we can't get from the Magris pack. And let's be honest, what the Magris pack adds is a whole lot more. So I'm going to give this to the Magris pack. I like that I can choose, you know, a small milk trailer. I can I can put a tow along behind it. In fact, I do know that you can daisy chain a bunch of those little tow alongs and you can have yourself a big long train of milk if you so desire. And you can do the same for slurry. Additionally, the little diesel tanker there is great. And this thing is fine, especially on a map. Um, not this map, but any of the other maps where there is no conveyor belt for loading your potatoes or your sugar beets. This is the perfect truck for that. Because uh, then you don't have to buy a front loader. It's got its own built-in arm. Yay! All right, so this is definitely going to the Magris pack. Ready, Pete? Pete's ready. We're going to the next one. Now, here's a couple packs of, or different, I guess they're not packs, but a couple of areas. They work well together. We have the tether. Yeah, that's a tether. The tether here for the crone. This is a good tether. It works well. It does exactly what you need it to do. It does have a little extra feature allowing it to swing slightly. I like it. It's good. I approve this message. I approve that tether. I like that tether. Over here we have the bailing equipment and an in-game tractor for display purposes. Now in the bailing equipment, there's several different pieces here. First we have bale transport. 
Bale Transport includes this round bale trailer over here. And the Murray Machinery Octo Quad System, allowing you to hold eight bales on the back and four bales on the front. As long as your tractor is biggy, biggy, big and beefy enough. In the actual spotlight, I didn't really load this guy up with bales. And there's a reason for that. It would have taken me forever because I'm a terrible driver. We all know this. However, it, when given time and effort, I can load this thing up and it does work pretty well. I'm just a terrible driver, so it works as well as a driver. How about that? I say take the Octo Quad, mainly because it, as an Octo Quad, will take a dozen bales, whereas this one over here is only going to take eight. Ah, yes. Now, when it comes to baling, we have four balers, sort of. Now, this one is truly a baler. This one can be a baler. This one is a bale wrapper. This one is, you would think it would be a bale... <laughs> just fall into it. All right, fine. You would think this John Deere unit would be a bale wrapper. It is a wrapper, but it wraps unturned grass. Doesn't handle straw. It doesn't handle hay. Just as unturned grass. These ones do, you know, straw and hay. When it comes down to it, though, this one's going to win by a huge margin because it's got the amazing things like doors with LED lights. And you have to come in here and you can you can change things. You can add rolls here if you want to Let's see if I can add a roll in here. Doo, 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 doo. Hello. Oop. Insert roll net. See, there we go. I put a new roll net in there. That's pretty darn cool. It's these uh, this ability to go in and make changes, to, to feel like you're an active participant in the process of bailing with this piece of machinery. Additionally, it's a continuous machine, meaning it has a cache of, or a space for caching in computer lock, in computer lock, and computer talk, it is caching. Basically, as it's wrapping, it's still able to collect and bail more, which is more than we can say for these other two machines. They're fine and all, but they're not nearly as amazing as this big old crone. So I would totally give this to the crone Ultima CF155XC. It takes the cake compared to these other two. This one is fine. I would say it's okay. It does have some minor log errors. Very simple L10 things. Uh, but it it has amazing amazing things as well. And in, in the fact that there's all the the different things you can open and do. Actually, I would rather have that down, but whatever. So I can I can open things and I can close things. And that's, you know, it's really cool to be able to actively participate in the act of setting the baler up. So I like that. It needs a little bit of cleanup. And obviously, you see that it's in Polish there in the help file. And you're going to have to change that if you don't speak Polish. But I'd say the Crone Ultima CF155XC is the best baler we got here. Give this one a look if you need an old school baler. And the Murray Machine Reacto Quad is the best bale transporter. And then the Tetter. Is it a Tetter? Windrow? No, it's not a Windrow. It's a Tetter. I have it listed as a Windrow because I'm a Gibbon. Uh, it's a Tetter. Oh, good Lord. Uh, it's worth your checking out as well. Let's go find ourselves another category. Stop. Okay, we made it. Woo. Oh, get back in the truck. Turn it off. All right. <laughs> in grain transport, we have an interesting one. We've got uh, these Marshall trailers. And we also have the Universal Transport System trailers. They're not really trailers. They're connectors for hooking up to your front loaders. They're an interesting concept. You see what I've done here? I threw them on a on the, one of the low loader trailers. They work for that as well. I just not sold on them in the long term, I, and I'm not really sold on the Marshall trailers. Now these are these are what I consider small grain trailers. We're going to look at larger grain trailers later. These are more of the ones that you take out on the field with you. And I'd say if you're going to take them out on the field, just take the Marshall. And honestly, I'd probably say even then I'd get the in-game equipment or something from a previous season over these. There's nothing wrong with either of them, but I'm just not 100% sold on them. 
your mileage, of course, may vary. Now, if you're really going out on the field, though, you might actually want an overloader. This is the Gigant Overloader. Good-looking overloader. Works well. And I'd say, sure, go for it. The price is similar to the in-game overloader, though. So you have to take that into consideration. You're really not gaining anything, and you're adding a mod to your game. If you're limited on how much space you can use, I'd probably just stay with the in-game equipment. But it's not a bad overloader by any stretch of the imagination. And I'd say, sure, go for it. So there you go. Gigant. Marshall. Universal Transport System. I'd say, if you need them, use them. If not, don't. Trailers for the truck. These are big grain transporters, unlike the smaller ones we had. I'll just leave the truck running. Uh, we have the Wilson trailer, which comes as two, a black and a, and a silver trailer like this, and a black and a silver tow behind there. We have, from the Magris pack, we have this trailer, and we have this curtain side. They're all good. Just anyone you want. Just take them. They're, they're all good. I see nothing wrong with any of them. Uh, the Wilson trailers are really good gravity trailers. And the other ones are really good old school trailers. So, yeah. Good. Keep them. Go for it. Enjoy. Right, Pete? Right. Pete agrees. Serious competition time. We're in our Peterbilt here. Here are the other semis. Or lorries, depending on your point of view. Hush now, Pete. All right. So we have the Volvo line from FH Modding. We also have their Mercedes line. Very nice. We have the uh, Magrises, of course. We have a couple of GMC Top Kicks. We have a Ural. We have a, uh, what is this thing called? It's a sh shuttle truck or a shunting truck. And then we have this giant monster Peterbilt that goes on for miles. All right, so again, what has problems? Well, let's start with what has problems. Peterbilt, major problems. We're talking about loads of log errors on that guy, so we don't really like it. Additionally, it's while it's strong, it has the turning radius of a uh, larger planetoid, and it's just ridiculously silly in the end. It just looks ridiculously silly. Um, so... Yeah, it's, it's a mess. The shunting truck also has major log errors in it. Uh, and it also has this, this this invisible nose thing going on here. I don't like that. Um, so I would give that one a pass as well. We have the Ural. The Ural is a really nice looking truck. But again, major log errors in it. <sighs> really upsets me because it's actually a really nice truck. It's got little details that really make you go, wow, like this little bucket back here. The bucket actually swings when you're driving. Pretty cool. It does not get dirty, though. Th those dirty tires, that's how it's modeled. So there you go. There's that. Nah, not all that great. The GMC Top Kicks. <sighs> Outside, they're, they look okay. I mean, except, um, not that one. This one? Yes, this one. <laughs> the the double rear axled one, it, uh, I'm trying to get over it. The double rear axle one, you can actually walk into the front of the cab, which is really odd. You can walk into the back of all this, but, you know, whatever. Um, so that's a problem. I'm stuck now. Okay, we can walk into the back of the... Uh, there we go. Over the top. There we go. All right. The other thing is the interiors of both of these are really just tragic. <laughs> Let's put it that way. They are tragic. I mean, we have, we have a hole back here in our window, uh, and the mirrors don't work which is kind of sad panda days. Um, they have minor log errors, very simple to fix. They use the wrong calculation for fuel consumption. I give them a pass unless you really need a GMC top kick. I think there's a, they're a great start. If a high quality modder picks them up and, and polishes them up with the help of the original modder, then I think they'd be great. But right now I just, I can't see keeping them really. I just, I can't see keeping them. Unless you really need something like that. That leaves the Mercs, the Volvos, and the Magruses. Hmm. Now, sitting right there is the contender for, for the semi slash lorry that we've used. And 
some of you are gonna are gonna hate this. Some of you are gonna scream about this. But here's my problem with all these vehicles. One, the Mercs are terribly underpowered, terribly underpowered. Um, when I was hauling stuff, and you'll and and you'll you'll know exactly which ones I'm talking about. But I was hauling some equipment, and I used all these lorries. I used the the Volvos. I used a Merc, and I used a Peterbilt. And the Mercs could never make it up the big hill in Bjornholm. Everyone knows which hill that is, the one going up from the shop to the, to the uh, farm. They struggled mightily getting up there. The Volvos, despite the 750 horsepower engine, it wasn't until we got to this last one, which is basically a rolling tank, that it actually would make it up the hill without going like five kilometers an hour. Now, this one has its own set of problems in that it steers like um, driving a duck on buttered ice. It's ridiculous. Put up against the peat, they fail mightily. The Peterbilt actually would pull that hill without a single problem. It doesn't have all-wheel drive on it, but these ones actually have the all-wheel drive keen. You see, I can actually it's actually keyed for all-wheel drive right now. Oh, we're inside a truck. Uh, so th even though those ones were running all-wheel drive, the Peach just walked away. The Magruses, though, the Magruses have the extra features that none of these other trucks have, including the Peterbilt there. I would say this is how I'd roll with this. If you want modern equipment and you want modern European equipment, you, can, you can't really go wrong with the Actros, the Mercedes Actros, or the Volvos over there. They both will do the job done. I just avoid that last Volvo. It's just too much, you know, duck on buttered ice. The Magris is here. Great if you want a classic piece of equipment. If you want a classic Russian, Ukrainian piece of equipment, fix the Ural. But I'm not going to do that. So I give it, say Magris if you want classic. If you want American, you're not going to go wrong with Pete. So there we go. I'd say because the, uh, the Volvo and the Merc are from the same model, they're basically the same truck. So that's for new vehicles and the Mega is for old. I wouldn't bother with the rest. All right. We're going to go and check out some more. Say goodbye, Pete. Yeah. Bye.